So in the last exercise, we covered how to read from real-time APIs. Okay, so as a recap, uh, what we did was that we actually used the URL reader to read from a data.gov uh, API. And thereafter, we did a join uh, with a reference table. Okay, then we actually write it into MongoDB. Well, this allows us to uh, get real-time data when coupled with the scheduler. It does not, in fact, provide a very optimized way for your dashboard to be refreshed. Now, to do that, what we need to do is to add a simple step called bump etag. Okay, so this is added into C join chains, so which is actually called in conjunction with the uh, scheduler for writing into MongoDB. So what this does is it will update the date time. Okay, once everything has been written, so it's uh, as you can see over here, it's under this column called etag. Right, this one actually ties back with the data sets etag over here. Okay, so this mechanism allows you to, or rather allows the software to tell whether or not the data it has is the latest by checking what it has currently versus the etag. So if the etag has a later date than uh, what the dashboard has, then it knows that the data has been updated. So this allows you to have a very lightweight refresh compared to checking every individual entry uh, that your, your dashboard has in its collection. Okay, so once we have added the bump etag, right, uh, this one when coupled with the scheduler will actually give you, you know, your refresh. Okay, so what we'll do now is we'll go into the GIS module. Okay, we'll return back to the HDB car parks GIS. And from here, we'll press edit. And then we'll add a control, right, by clicking on this uh, properties for the filter panel. Then we click add. Okay, under new control, we'll call this refresh. Okay, and here we will have the uh, change the type to interval timer. And then interval, we can leave it as something like five seconds. So this one has to work together with the uh, scheduler's refresh. So this, this interval timer only refreshes the GIS the map right but the data only comes in every minute if you recall from from the api and also our scheduler uh, cron expression okay so there is two dependencies so typically if there is two dependencies like this uh, we can actually set the the downstream uh, dependency to be a much lower time because if you put it as one minute as well what happens is if let's say your refresh happens at you know, your refresh for your GIS happens at uh, 0 0.55, right? And your data comes in at 0 0.56, right? You have to wait two whole minutes, right? So you'll wait until uh, one five five before your dashboard, uh, your GIS actually updates itself again. So adding a lower timer for the downstream uh, helps reduce this delay. Okay, so once you have added in the refresh, uh, obviously your your pins won't automatically refresh because what you need to do is you need to add a control by. So we'll click on layers, pin layers, all right, and then we click onto properties. And here we'll add in a control by. And if you only have one other control that's not added, it will be automatically selected for you. Okay. Now if we press OK. Uh, what we want to do again is to uh, change the tooltips. Right, so this allows us to prove that the data has been updated. So let's say uh, we'll call this update time. Okay, and then we'll go back to the ETL to look for the name of the timestamp. So it's actually called timestamp, right, a field name. So we'll do the same formatting. Uh, so dollar curly bracket timestamp. All right, then we add a BR over here. Okay, then we can press OK. Okay, and we can see that the timestamp right now is 12, 13, 27, right? So if we wait one minute and up to one minute and 10 seconds or one minute, five seconds, right? The data will actually uh, refresh itself.
Okay, so with the incoming data, uh, what you see is the zoom actually gets pushed back out. Uh, so, but if you hover over the pins, right, you will be able to see that the time has updated. So now it's 12.14, previously it was 12.13. Okay, so next thing we're going to do is to create a dashboard. Okay, so you'll see that the dashboard actually has a uh, the same mechanism. But because it doesn't rely on you know the the map tile itself, uh, you see the the refresh is look it will look a lot smoother. So uh, let's go ahead and create a dashboard over here. Okay, so we press edit as per usual. Now I'm gonna go through this very quickly because the main thing here that I want to show is actually the uh, ETAC timer. Okay, so we'll just create a simple uh, pie chart. Okay, and then we'll add in another four. Let's say linear table. Okay, so at this point, uh, we have created two charts. Uh, you can also go ahead and fill it in more with uh, a bar chart. So we want to fill up the whole screen. Okay, so we add a bar chart, HDB carpark current on the X axis. We can go with, uh, for example, you know, whether or not uh, this carpark has night parking. Right, followed by the average lots use percentage. Okay, we'll change the text format to something with less decimals. Okay, and then here we'll add in the control by uh, controls. Right, and here uh, you'll notice that we have both the ETAC timer and the interval timer. So, ETAC timer is more suitable for when you actually have a bump e-tag whereas interval timer does not rely on the presence of the e-tag so since we have an e-tag we'll go ahead and add it in okay and due to the uh, lightweightness of an e-tag timer we can actually just use one second uh, for the refresh interval okay so we'll just choose the data set and now we'll select the uh, add the control by for all three charts so what we're looking for is at the end of one minute, we should be able to see the data gets refreshed. Okay, so I'll press save. Now the, the main thing to look at actually is for the linear table because linear table actually contains the date time uh, or rather the timestamp. Okay, so right now it's 12.19. Uh, we'll give it a minute. Okay, so you saw the uh, timestamp actually updated, so now it's 12.20, right? Uh, you'll continue to refresh by itself, uh, and one key thing you'll notice is using the e-tag, your charts do not blink, right? They only refresh the values within them. So this one, you know, it's much smoother and it looks a lot better compared to something like the refresh from the GIS which actually, you know, zooms you right out to the initial zoom level, right? So as long as your data changes significantly, you know, you will be able to see the charts change uh, as well. But in our case, because, you know, it's an average of over 2000 lots, right? Any small changes each minute is so averaged out that you don't see them change in the uh, charts itself.